and we're back with some more RimWorld. And I have to admit that that looks really cool. That Phoenix armor with the wings on the side of it. Yeah, it kind of fits, especially now that we've got Thrombos on the team. I think Phoenix armor and Thrombos just goes together so perfectly. All right, uh, the plans for today. I think first up, we're going to make some changes to the bedrooms over here. We actually have everyone tied up in the love puddle perfectly, except for Joshua. They are our last male, number 21 on, well, we have 21 pawns. Wait, 19? Yes, yeah, some of them are getting into pods right now. We have 21 pawns. There is 11 males and 10 females. So Joshua is sort of the one left out. We need to hire one more female. That's it. Once we've hired one more female, we should be able to pair off Joshua. And then that means we'll have everyone paired off in one way, shape or form. Um, yeah, I'll go back to the spreadsheet later on how the relationships are working out. It's, it's, it's too complicated otherwise. All right. So first up, let's move all these beds around and put in some sleep accelerators. Oh, while waiting to move these all around, there's a couple of new lovers here. It's Intern Six and Grey Ghost. They became aroused, and what was it, by making an observation about fighting demons. What? Is that new? I feel almost like that's new. Oh, that reminds me I have to redo all this. I took a screenshot of this beforehand so I could figure out who goes back in here. I think it's Jeremy and Intern Zero. Now, these sleep accelerators are pretty nifty little things. What it will do is it'll increase the, uh, the rest effectiveness of the pawns in the bed beside it. So if we check under rest effectiveness, 140%. And uh, they're getting a plus 35% bonus from the sleep accelerator. That's pretty big. It means they spend an awful lot less time sleeping and more time doing stuff. So I'm not sure how it'll affect the gut loving and... Is that affecting both those pawns? I want to say it is. Rest. Uh, 45, 46. How are you doing? Uh, it seems to be much of a muchness. Do I have to put one on each? Like, damn it, if I need... I, I thought I only needed one per double bed. Uh, I think that's how it works, but uh, let's do some testing. Yeah, it's still going good. Oh, you can see the power draw is 400 watts while the pawn is in there. So yes, it does appear to affect double beds as well. This is going to increase the amount of productivity of our pawns at the cost of 400 watts while they're sleeping. And we might want to break up the schedules and change them out a bit. We did. We have lots of power right now. Actually, one second. Finish those walls. We have, uh, yeah, 12 kilowatts of power coming from that. Never mind our normal wind generation. And we've got some battery storage, though. I don't want to build too much more battery storage because that just makes the Zist events far more powerful. Oh, and please notice, these sleep accelerators go down to 50 watts of draw power when they're not in use and 400 watts when they are. So sort of want to have people's sleeping schedules staggered because we don't want them all sleeping at the same time or it might redline our grid. We'll have to do some changes with that, but also since we're using a whole bunch of people in relationships, it's going to make it even more confusing. I'm going to worry about that in a bit. For now, we're just going to get this done. That should increase productivity and allow us to hammer out more steel because we're actually running short. That looks like a much, much neater bedroom, though. Yeah, once we get a partner for Joshua, or if we get a partner for Joshua, we may end up not getting them one, simply because I don't think we need to hire any more people at this point, and we'd be looking out for probably uh, some sort of melee specialist. Uh, oh, yeah, I have to reassign that out to Joshua again. There's been a lot of micromanagement in the last few minutes. Okay, the eclipse is ending. Everyone's doing their thing. How much steel have we got left over after all of that? 954. Let's go grab about another thousand steel out of the ground. Oh, well, this one's a new one on me. Quest active pirates with a psychic droner. And it actually paused the game automatically when it did it. It normally only does that when, you know, people invade the actual map. Uh, quest has become active. Pirates have set up an outpost nearby just because. Uh, it's made of silver to harass you. There's a psychic droner machine there. T turn to the male gender and there's an enemy outpost at the site guarded by 26 pirates. Right. Okay. Tune to the male gender. I guess we should probably send women? Actually, no, it's a, it's a droner. It's just going to make people unhappy. And everyone's got enough wedding buffs that... Yeah, I think... Actually, wait, some people don't have wedding buffs. They've been in the pods. Hmm. I say we load up eight people, and then we fire them over and destroy the pirates with extreme prejudice. While I was about to jump into the transport pods and go flying over, I realized we don't have access to Sarah at the moment, and Sarah is the only pawn with fire skip. So we either have to use a shuttle to get back or walk on foot. We're not walking on foot from there, that would take days, and it would leave us very undefended with eight pawns away, especially considering we've already got four pawns in storage. We'll take Sarah out, once Sarah's uh, gone through her regeneration cycle, we'll then launch a team over with them, make sure we can bring everyone back instantly, just in case something something untoward should happen. God God forbid Randy decides that we, you know, have a nice day or anything. Oh, would you look at that, it's a Zist event, and no problems. 
well, did damage one of the faithful images, but that is fine. Oh, uh, let's see. Some of our people like Joshua were getting a bit sad, so I moved some things around so they got to Joshua got to sleep with someone they cared about. That should hopefully cheer them up a wee bit. Uh, we stuck intern zero over here because currently they've had a recent marriage and they're feeling quite rock solid. All of our males have a minus 30 right now. And despite all of our males having a minus 30, I think there's only Grey Ghost and Joshua who are in the yellow. Everyone else is is like, yeah, no, and I mean, it's not like they're bad. Their their mood is still rock solid high. This is, uh, this is kind of nice. Sarah, how, how you doing in there? Another 2.2 days. Once Sarah's out, we'll, uh, we'll get around to taking care of that droner. While we are waiting for Sarah to get out of the pod, we're going to make a few changes here. I'd like to expand this uh, fabrication area. And we're going to include all of this extra section into this, you know, heated area. I don't have the the mod installed to show you the heat maps, but basically this place is where we keep everything warm, uh, including even the science area, which I think we're almost done with. How much science we got left? I think we got... We don't need uranium slug turrets, we don't need auto cannon turrets, and we don't need geothermal power considering our location. So we could kind of just cut out the research now, and I probably will soon enough. But for now, let's just do a little bit more right here. This entire area is going to become part of that. Well, that's terrible timing. A psychic drone high male. Um, no, can't get any worse. Minus 30 is as low as it goes. All right, so we, we can hold off on killing the pirates until the psychic drone that's hitting our tile goes away because that goes away. Until that goes away, there's no point even taking out the pirates. Right, uh, okay, finish this off and expand this section out. I want more people producing components. I'd really like to get a few more pieces of armor up before we take on the final mission. Then all we do is deconstruct this wall along here and that should add that entire section in. Now, what's the temperature in there? It's minus 24 in there. It's 19 degrees in there. All right, okay, they're taking a nap, but... On the bright side, it's going to be a 35% faster nap than usual. That frees up so much space for production. And uh, I'm thinking... Yeah, we're going to put in another one right there. Another one right there. And that should mean component production, which we're a little bit shy on. We've only got two real people doing production, and right now they're both inside pods. Probably not a great idea, but... You know, soon enough they'll be out and one year younger and more productive. A quick polar bear migration will give everyone a little bit of shooting practice. I still haven't made a gun for intern seven. I'll I'll get around to it. Um there's right, everyone there. Yeah, perfect. Now where did I put that command? Drafted hunt, that's the one. This should make things a little bit simpler. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, get a little bit closer, we'll take out the last three, and that should be some nice meat for the stockpile. Not that we really need it, but I hate to see things go to waste on the ice sheet. Polar bear revenge, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. It'll last about two seconds though, and another one bites the dust. And we'll grab the last one and then we can get everyone back to work. I'm still kind of shocked that despite us be suffering from a massive uh, psychic shock, or the negative minus 30 moodlet, everyone's still doing just fine. Alright, uh, all done. Everyone head back in. Actually, set that to high priority. Everyone grab those and bring those back to the fridge. Uh, sleep is set up fine. Our new production area is going grand, though Intern 7 can't produce components yet. They need a crafting skill of 8. So I am having them make flak vests that we're immediately going to scrap just so they get some practice. I should probably give them something simpler to make or uh, just probably something I could work out that would give them would allow them to get the maximum amount of experience for the minimum amount of resource inputs. But I'm lazy. That is the odd one. We've had some immature dryad meat fall out of the sky. Um, okay, that's, um, mm, feels kind of weird. And we've also had some synth thread. That's uh, fine. We'll just stick that in the piles as well. I'm trying to clear out as much as the map as possible of gunk, just so that it looks nice and clean for the final fight. Well, that's one psychic drone finished. We still have the other psychic drone to go, but Sarah will be out in 16 hours and we can finally take care of that problem. Also, it's time I replace some of these doors. Now, I usually don't build these doors until much later in the game. Reason being, they're just expensive to put in. We're talking about auto doors over here. Mm. You can make them out of anything you want, though, is the thing. Wait, wait, let me rephrase that, because checking the wiki, I'm wrong. Um, it used to be, I used to think that if you built uh, steel auto doors, or any type of auto doors, they all open the same speed. But it turns out wood and steel are still slightly faster. In fact, so fast that it's as if they're not even there. As in, it's the same as if... Someone was just walking through an open space. Uh, now, let's put steel auto doors over there as well. Um, and right here. This is going to be our high traffic area, so we might as well make sure they're fast. Oh, and one there. 
Everything else I'm not going to worry about. Ooh. Yeah, maybe there as well. Anywhere where we might have to poke our heads out. Hmm. I might do a few more later, but not until everyone's out of storage and the psychic droner is dealt with. Ooh, if it isn't one of my favorite quest types. Emergency landings. Okay, refugee empire, seeking a place to land. Yeah, shuttle contains Agatha and another civilian and th three troopers. Commander and civilians must be rescued, blah, blah, blah. 12 honor, LTEC staff, or... Hmm. Could anyone do with 12 honor? Actually, no. I don't think it's worth the risk. Reason being, we only have Raf to do the skipping. And if there's multiple ones with shield pops, that might be risky. But then again, it'd be fun just to kill some stuff. It's been a while. We haven't killed anything but some polar bears. No, no, no. We are going to wait until Sarah gets out of there, and then we can go kill some pirates and get rid of that psychic droner, which would be much more beneficial to us. Uh, for the time being, though, we have put in these doors, and you notice people can pop through really quick. Uh, how is that affecting the temperature in here? It could be better or worse. Uh, seems fine. Anyway, we'll leave it as it is. We also did the same thing in the bedroom. I might want to wall in the rest of those things, but uh, no, I'll leave those doors there for now. Okay, give us, uh, say, 11 more hours, and we'll go kill ourselves some pirates. All right, we got everyone loaded up and ready to go. We are going to fire there, drop at edge. We don't want to be dropping in the middle. That's just a little bit too dangerous. Okay, let's go grab them. Um, let's pause the moment we go in, which is good. We have okay, 21 humans. What do you got in weaponry? Ooh, three sniper rifles. That's annoying, but livable with, to be honest. Uh, assault rifles... Yeah, I see... Where's... I can't see our drop pod. Ah, here we go. You can see our drop pod shadows there. I say we just take them at range. We don't get in too close. The only ones we really have to worry about are the snipers. They could be a problem, but generally, their, well, their accuracy is pretty terrible. We'll be using all of our abilities to increase our ability to murderage, so I think we'll be fine. Oh, come on, come on. Yeah, right there. Seriously? Oh, actually, check the numbers. Uh, enemies, let's see. Have you got anyone that would be good for us to hire? Bloodlust. Bloodlust and nimble. I, I do want a, I want a tough, nimble pawn. A tough, nimble female pawn. That That's all, you know? <laughs> Not like I have any uh, very, very specific requirements. All right. That's all we've got so far. Damn it. I we need to get a tiny bit closer. No, one of them will stray in range in a second. Yep, there you go. They're attacking now. Uh, where is... Marksmanship Command? Activate. I want them to die as fast as they can try and get even close to us. Dead. 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 Oh. Damn, Trollfin actually took a few hits. Uh, Daniel took... Oh, I forgot to check if they had shield pops. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Is that their only one? I think that is their only shield pop. Very well then. Retreat. Just retreat. No point hanging around. Oof. Snipers are a bit of a problem, but that's okay. A little bit further back. Daniel, how are you looking? Left leg gunshot, no immediate danger. That's fine. Seriously, how are you guys still standing? No one bites the dust. Perfect. Now, maybe get a little bit closer so we can hopefully get a few more of them. Ah, uh, dead, dead, dead. Okay, you three, how about you just pop over there? I would like to make sure none of them escape alive, if at all possible. It, it's more of a principle thing than a... Oh. Everyone get down there a little bit. Maybe we could get a few more. Yep, keep going, keep going, keep going, and... Yeah, you know what? Right there is fine. Guys, stop letting people try to escape. Dead, dead. And finally... Protein? Protein? Good job. Not a single survivor. That's what I like to see. All right, let's go kill whatever that psychic droner is before people get a little bit miffed. And maybe we can... How much time is left in you? Four hours on you, 40... Oh, we might take that one with us. We haven't had an execution in quite a while. I'm going to assume this large room is the annoying thing that's making the noise. Ooh, that's a lovely floor. What's that floor made out of? Sandstone spike core. Hmm. Well, nice as that is. 
we have machine guns, and this thing needs to go. They, they, like I said, they make these things really well. Normally, if you shoot a, com a really advanced piece of computer and machinery, it just falls apart instantly. But these things can take a hell of a pounding. Oh, psychic drone are destroyed. Everyone's just going to be that little bit happier. Uh, let's see what else they had down here. This place looks interesting. Okay, pirates, what do you got? Not a single chair. Come on, seriously? No chairs, no chairs, just beds? Like, what were you sitting on? Savages. Uh, not even worth scrapping things up to take them with us. Let's just get out of here and take the food. Oh, and the hostages. If Yeah, there's a couple of enemies there. You can see those two. Might be able to take those back or keep them alive long enough to, uh, to sacrifice them later. One thing we are going to take with us is the four heaters. I mean, why not? Uh, we could also take the corpses, but there's honestly not, not enough of them that I'm willing to burn a shuttle on it. But four heaters. Yeah, we'll find a use for them. And then we can immediately just fire skip the whole group back. Oh, actually, wait. Health-wise, they should be able to patch these up much faster when they're in here. And let's see. Yeah, they're patching them up. You can kind of see it there. Patched, patched, patched. How's this one looking? Yeah, so both of them have now survived. Yeah, excellent. Then we'll fire skip them all back. Just, it's a little bit of a trick. Otherwise, what'll happen is they'll arrive, immediately be sick, and then we'll have to cart them to some beds before we can tend them. All right, everybody's home. You guys can get straight back to work. Oh, we need a prisoner room, don't we? Hmm. Yeah, you can be four prisoners. And I think it's going to be pretty much instant executions all around. I don't really see a reason not to. One thing I'm immediately going to do is I'm kind of feeling bad for Slim. They haven't got... Like, their social is literally their husband, Jarek. That's it. They have no other relationships. Everyone else has at least three. So we're going to crank up their social an awful lot by doing a couple of sacrifices there. That should hopefully crank up everyone's mood. Well, that's the theory, and if they could, you know, get just a couple more relationships under their belt, that'd be nice. I was completely not paying attention, but we now have a thrombo calf. Um, yep, that, that's the thing that just happened. Alright, numbers-wise, where is it? Let's check under animals. You are 21 hours old, and we have another one that's thrombo that's 17 days pregnant, and in three more days we'll have another thrombo calf. And, oh, that's two combat suppliers. Let's see if these combat suppliers have anything we are interested in. Actually, they'll buy tail caps, won't they? No? What? You would... Ah, damn it. On the bright side, we can buy a bunch of components off them, which is good, because we're running short. My bad. I didn't have the, uh, the transponder thing plugged in. We are going to nab all of their components anyway, and see if they've got anything worthwhile. Well, they don't have anything we really care about. We just bought eight components, which feels wrong. Let's try the Aardvark Incorporated combat suppliers. Maybe... Yeah, you got seven components. Dear Lord, you guys are terrible. We basically just bought a few components. That was it. Uh, yeah, we'll hold those inside. We have four people currently working on mass producing components. And one thing I'm trying to get done as well is to produce some tribal wear. Uh, but we burned a whole bunch of resources in producing tribal wear and all we're getting is extant. We we kind of need extant tribal or no, masterwork tribal, tribal wear. Reason being... Otherwise, we can't get our temperature resistance down to about minus 72, 71 to 73. Yeah, so 72 to 73 is what we can just about manage. Uh, guinea pig fur tribal wear, excellent. That's... Ugh, the guinea pig tribal wear is... Guinea pig fur tribal wear is actually slightly better than trumbo fur, but only if you can get it in equal quality. Uh, let's see here. When it rains, it pours. Another a bulk goods shredder has passed by. That's good. We can actually... Could kill those guinea pigs for more fur. What? I think? Yeah. You could also breed them, but that's way too much effort. So we bought uh, nine guinea pigs just so we can slaughter them for their fur. That hopefully is going to be slightly, well, that will be slightly warmer than thrombo fur. A bunch of neutronamine components, advanced components, and we sold them off a bunch of clothing and stuff. Uh, yeah, and hey, someone want to scrap up those flak vests? We don't need them anymore. How are we looking? Okay, you all need to immediately get slaughtered, and then you all need to immediately get butchered. Between the guinea pig fur we had and the ones we just slaughtered, that gives us 200. Uh, that means we can build about three tribal wear. Yeah, three of them, yeah, 6, 12, 18. Yeah, we just need these to be, you know, masterwork or better. I've already built three of these, and every single one of them was excellent, which is sort of frustrating. And if we check under here, under tribal wear, the person assigned to it is Valiant. Actually, we'll make it Charlie. Oh, Charlie, this is going to be you. Charlie has 20 right now? Charlie, what the hell, mate? You've been working really hard. Now, where is Charlie? Uh, Charlie's down here making Phoenix armor right about now. I'm going to get you to prioritize. Actually, we'll let Jarek finish doing what they're doing. Then we're going to get you to prioritize. 
Now, all you got to do is produce these two of three out of three of these as masterworks. I mean, you're a production specialist. Uh, yeah, you're under tech support. You're good at crafting of 20 and... Did you just make one? Or yeah, you made an excellent one. God damn it, that's four excellents in a row. Five! Come on! Seriously? This stuff is not easy to come by. What is going on here? Do you can see all the... Oh. You're a level 20 crafter with the maximum bonus. And don't give us... Don't, don't give us... Masterwork! Yes! Finally! Again, Master Perk, uh, Masterwork 1 gives 31 cold protection. 31.4. A regular one just gives... 25.1. So you can see they're, they're, uh, it's a massive difference. Uh, we're going to have to make a bunch out of thrombo fur as well, so we're going to be butchering up those thrombo shortly. Uh, one, of those, one of those masterwork uh, guinea pig fur tribal wares combined with phoenix armor gives more than enough cold protection to survive on this tile. So I'm thinking, if we're not going to be going through another winter, we might be able to get away by skimping just a tad. Well, the seasons, they are a changing. The temperature outside is now a minus 28. We've got to the point where... Outside raids can actually be human. That is good for us. Uh, as well as that, we need to put down a few more neural superchargers. And uh, let's see. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, we've got 22 people, and they only need a neural su supercharge once every two days. However, they may hog them. We could probably put down more, but for now, just for now, we're going to skimp a little bit and see if we can get away with it. Reason being, it's just the power requirements for all those. They're 400 watts, constantly. I really don't want to be spending that much electricity if we can avoid it. The only reason we really want it is to avoid the uh, the negative six from once neural supercharge. But the moment they get dosed, they're good for like 48 hours. Uh, okay, we'll put in two extra. All right, just a little bit more. There we go. So with two extra ones, we should hopefully be able to, like, assuming they rotate in and out, and they only go for it when they've got a negative moodlet. And, yeah, our baby thromal calf is hella cute, actually. i got to make sure not to end up with those on the front lines. The adult thrombos can definitely can. Oh, I should probably point out, these things are ridiculously expensive in components. It's four components apiece. So, yeah, we just burn through about half of our component supplies. But we have, oh, research complete. What are we looking at here? Uh, we've only got the drug stuff, which we're not going to do, and geothermal. I think geothermal power is the only thing left. We have literally knocked out everything else bearing that in drugs. And we're not doing drugs because we're not that type of colony, all right? We'll, we'll, we'll trade in human leather tail caps, but we have standards. Okay, lump of buried steel. Yeah, whatever. Masterwork. Chinchilla fur tail cap. Ooh, very nice. All right, next up, I want to clear out this space. We haven't actually been using this for a while, so I... Th think we can, we might just turn this into a prison and that would free up this area. I'm kind of okay right now with, you know what, put those there. If we make this our prison area, I'd kind of prefer it. We're using this nutrient paste dispenser to feed our pawns. Well, these two nutrient paste dispensers. Switching everyone over to nutrient paste is just faster and more efficient and our people don't care about it anymore. This cuts down on the amount of cooking we have to do. The only things we have to cook for now are the thrombos. The thrombos actually are eating our, our simple meals. They got into the chocolate for a bit as well, but I, I forbade them after a while. With everyone asleep pretty much and all of those active, plus we've got all of these active and our power output from our wind turbines is redlining. We're still looking at a slow decrease in our battery power right there. So our batteries are are going down when everything's active. But the moment every well, once people get up from their naps, that should slow down. Mm, just about. 541. I think we might actually have enough power to pull through this, considering like no wind power is coming in. This is the worst of the worst. And now people are getting out of bed and wind is actually picking up. Yeah, I think I think, I think we can support this. This level we can support. Oh, over here, this is going to be our new prison. Uh, over here, we're actually going to have to put in some more flooring. We could... Ooh, there's a whole bunch of flooring types we could put in. I'm thinking some sterile tile in here. Why not? We've got so much silver. It's it's kind of gotten out of hand, actually. We have 32,000 silver. Uh, I wasn't even trying. It's just we've been clearing out all the things that come by. So sterile tile seems like a good choice. Let's just, yep, floor this entire place in. And we might make this into another dining room. Not that it needs to be. Oh, and if that's the case, we might as well floor in our little hospital room as well. We were just putting the finishing touches on this new dining room when Siege of the Eaters of Blood has shown up. I'm curious to see what the points total in this was. Wow, we're up to 40,000 points, or quadruple the normal points, but that gets limited to 10,000. Oh, when you move the raid limit, that's going to get painful. Alright, raids factor. This is actually going to be really small. 
the Randy random factor is like 0.59. That can go up to 1.5, so this could be almost three times as big. Let's jump to the location. Let's turn on the map. Yeah, they're gonna be up there. I think if this is a siege, then we need to get people on mortars straight away. We'll grab the three best mortar people. Looking at the numbers here, having a shooting frenzy? That really seems to help with the mortar miss radius. I mean, don't get me wrong, their shooting skill is already 17 to start, and they also have a bionic arm to increase their manipulation, so it's not like they were going to be any slouch to begin with, but I didn't know that it's going to help so much. And I should probably check to see what we're dealing with here. All right, we are dealing with... Ooh, we've got two doomsdays. And we'll mortar them from a distance. They've got four triple rocket launchers. Uh, how many of you, or any of you, any actual use to us? Enemies wise, let's see. We have. I'm not seeing any low shields. Any low shields? No, I think we're good. Traits wise, tough misogynist, bloodlust. Nah, nothing we're really interested in. Yeah, mortar from them from a distance, convince them to come into our kill box, and any of the survivors can get killed there. Alright, come on, everyone. Get to your positions. Perfect. Alright, now let's see where you're going, shall we? The thing that kind of annoys me the most is the amount of slag chunks they're leaving behind. I mean, we've been trying to clean this place up for so long. Oh yeah, uh, you guys, where are you going? Actually, make sure we've got these selected. Uh, come on, pick your location. Our guys don't want to be on the mortars all day, lads. Come on. Seriously? Uh, Alright, they seem to have... Pick to location, we are going to mortar target right there. Oh, yeah, that looks like, that looks good, that looks good. Oh! That's eight dead. Only 32 left alive, and I'm pretty sure a few of those are unconscious. Okay, we will keep firing. No, they've already decided they're going to assault. Okay, how many of you are still actually wielding anything dangerous? One doomsday, two triples. Yeah, we better bring everyone back inside. I probably should have done that already. I've been a bit sloppy here. All right, let's bring everyone back inside and get ready for a little bit of kill box action. Everyone's headed back in. I'll probably pound on a door or two, but considering the amount of them that are already injured or dead, I think we're fairly safe. There's, where is the triple? Okay, there's one triple right up front. Hmm. Be able to target those down and then... Cutting out the rest would be quite simple. Hmm. You know what? Never mind. Never mind. We'll just let them go through the kill box and we'll sort them out that way. They might pound on a door or two, but we should be all right. Let's just let me double check that I haven't left anything in any doorways anywhere that might tempt them to sneak inside. This should be a good day for intern seven. They might be able to get a kill or two off. They're still at zero kills, which makes them... Well... Oof. That body armor really soaks up damage. Well done. Uh, Sarah... Why don't you get a skip on that guy? That's actually... You seem really tough. I have to bring over a couple of other people. I just thought this was going to be an easy slaughter, but their body armor is incredibly resilient. You know what? I'm going to let them shoot back. We've got decent cover. Though I am going to summon in a couple of more people to join in on the fun. I really thought this was going to be an awful lot simpler. Uh, you go there. Go there. Uh, Petro? You aren't even drafted for this stuff, buddy. Get, get, get in there in the middle, or get in somewhere. Uh, Sarah here is going to be ready to skip that Doomsday guy out of the way. We don't want them ever getting a beat on anything. That guy can't get a shot off. Yeah, good, good. Whew. They don't seem to be popping out of each other either. Why? Weird. It's like the fact that now that our turrets actually have power, it's not actually helpful. Hmm. You know what, we'll put another power wire there and sort it out. That was a lot messier than I would have liked. I'm going to have to sort out those turrets before we go. They should not have been able to bunch up like that. They should have popped out of each other before they got into the tunnel. They actually got a far more shots than they should have been allowed to. Anyway, I think we've got everything we need. Uh, did we get their doomsday guy? I don't think we did. Hey! There's a doomsday guy left. Okay, we'll, we'll have to make sure they don't escape alive, but everyone else can run. They don't seem to be running away as fast as they should be. I think we might actually get a lot of them. Yeah, dead. 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 And one more. Dead. Oh. They've got five. Yeah, they're going to bleed out long before they get to the edge of the map. <laughs> wow, it's like they actually left a giant blood trail. 
Hey, let's get a few prisoners in, get ourselves a little bit of executions on. All our age reversal cycles are almost completely finished. Uh, there is Unbreakable and Josh. That just leaves Intern 6 and Intern 7. Actually, Intern 7 should... They got two kills on them. Uh, yeah, I'm still not giving them a name. Like, you just haven't really earned it. I mean, Joshua there has 33. Like, and Intern 6 hasn't actually smacked anything in the face. They, they will soon enough, but uh, for now I think they're going to be left nameless. And I think you yeah, ever finished that section as well. Let me put in a little bit more dining chairs here around our, uh, our nutrient paste dispenser. Well, we would finish finish it if it wasn't for a wedding. Uh, fine. Oh, damn it. I meant to execute these. Okay, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. You're not going to die. And there's still 19 hours before we need to execute you. We can get a few executions on you in a minute. All right. Jeremy and Joshua. Let's let's see who's got the most weddings under their belt. Jeremy only has one husband, two fiancés, uh, and that's it. Damn, Jeremy, you're, you're like behind the curve. Joshua, fiancé, fiancé, lover, and two exes. Ooh. So both of you are actually, you know, pretty low-key on this stuff. Oh, and does someone want to get the corpse out of there? You know, it just, it's kind of dirtying up the place. All right, we'll let them do their uh, their little thing, but I think everyone should be reasonably happy. No one's got one's neural supercharge. Well, okay, we'll keep an eye on Casey, but just about everyone should get the neural superchargers they need from now on. And it's another marriage ceremony. Slim, uh, Simao, and Charlie. Who wins this time around? One, two, three, four husbands and two fiancés for Simao. That's pretty impressive. Charlie is coming in with two wives, two fiancés, and a lover. So, so slightly just behind some out. But, you know, they're, they're close enough. That's pretty good. Right, and when it comes to these neural superchargers, so far what I'm seeing is people who have the need come along and top up. And people, and so we should be fine? Uh, we'll find out. It's just the weddings are messing everything up. And the place is absolutely filthy. I'm going to have to do a big sweep here. Uh, I'm going to have to go and update the spreadsheet some more as well. The, just the complications arising. Now, we do actually have Intern 7 and Intern 0 who are, here who are... Not, uh, in the same bedroom, but I think what we're going to do is we're just going to wait until geothermal is finished. And once geothermal is finished, I'm going to rip this out and extend the bedrooms on into the section. In fact, we may just rip it out now. We don't need geothermal power, and I'm just doing it for completionist's sake. Yeah, let's just complete it. I kind of want to complete it, even though it's not ne really necessary at all, but it's just the completionist streak in me wants it gone. Ooh, 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 look at that. Slim, Slim's actually managed to pick up another lever. For the first, like, they were, they were literally the worst. Uh, I, I thought they were doomed to be, like, only have Jarek for their entire lives, but now they've got D. Delaire as lover as well. Get a couple of those executions helped out. In fact, just to help them out even more, we give them an aesthetic nose, but I was thinking, what if we maybe gave them an aesthetic shaper as well? I produced one on the sly because, you know, they could find a use for it. So I'm thinking, yeah, they head to that bed, though I'm going to need to get someone to clean that room. Yeah, clean that room to make sure that it's a nice clean operation in there. And I think with that helping them out, they should be just that little bit more likely to end up in another relationship or two. There we go. Slim's got themselves a new aesthetic shaper. And on the social front, that's a lot of high numbers I'm seeing there. 46 is the lowest. So 46 to, a, to like 100 points with everyone. Like, she should be getting like picked on by everyone at this point. All right. Uh, oh, this place definitely needs a clean. Look at all the blood everywhere. It just everyone's sort of busy crafting. Like, look at this for a crafting section. I really haven't been focusing on this, but we have been crafting like monsters. The amount of components that has been required to build up this base is insane. Uh, why is there 81 components there, 21 advanced components, and I've set these two to produce 100, and f 100 normal components and 40 regular components, one for tree and the other one for intern 7. This here is set to produce phoenix armor, uh, but only if, like we've set it up down here, They'll try and make 20 advanced components and 50 regular components, but once that's done, they spend all their extra time making Phoenix armor, which is how we're slowly converting everyone over. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight people on Phoenix armor already. I don't think we're going to get the rest of the team, though. We just don't have enough time. And power-wise, we do get a bit of a dip. I haven't actually set up any alternate schedules. We do get a bit of a dip during the night, but it seems to be working out fine. And these over here seem to be working out pretty good as well. For example, Jarek here is coming over. And they have once neural supercharge, which means they haven't got one in 48 hours. So they seem to be spreading them out. And I'm hopeful at some point that we'll start seeing people who... Oh, no. Someone else wants a neural supercharge. Maybe I do need more of those. Yeah, we've got a, a few common thrombos showing up, so we're going to go on a little bit of a hunting spree. Our fridge is starting to look a little bit bare. Uh, you guys. Go target that except for Gus. And... 
Is it gonna make it? No. It tried. It got so close. Uh, where the rest of you go? A bunch more. Uh, so there's three more over this side. We'll, we'll just go around the long way and grab them. This is kind of dumb, but the more of these we have, the better. We don't have any inspired tamings at the moment. Otherwise, we might grab a few. Um, hmm, which reminds me we should probably butcher up some more. Damn it! I forgot to strip those people before we butchered them. So they've left their clothing all over the place. Guys, someone get that out of there. It's going to... Oh, it's clogging up the doorways and everything. Ah, that's annoying. Yeah, never mind. It'll be fine. Oh, look. Thrumbo revenge. Yep, yeah, seems a bit normal. One down. Two down. Hey, where are you running? Come back here. Oh, you're a maddened manhunter. Why are you running that... There's like a whole bunch of us right here. Uh... What are you doing? You know what, Sarah, where are you? Uh, I would like you to... Skip... Actually, you know what, skip yourself over there. Why not? You can skip yourself to there. If you can get in range, hopefully you can get off a few shots and annoy it. Seriously? It's like it doesn't care. Okay, skip yourself over there. Everyone else is coming to help you out. Why? It's just... What are you doing? Uh... Hmm... Yeah, I don't think we can catch up with it. Fine, we'll close the doors. You... You don't... <laughs> I love the way it's just like, no, I am going to ignore the entire mass of people who are shooting at me, and I'm going to go to attack something inside the base. That's the plan. Get, get, get out of there. Now we just got to make sure no one does anything stupid, like tries to get it, go out those doors. Eh, off you go, everyone. Back to work. And we'll just wait outside here and shoot it dead when it comes out. But yes, that's uh, the joys of dealing with thrombos. Finish that off. Uh, yeah, hunt those two, actually. Yeah, you could have just stayed where you are and done that way earlier. Silly thrombo. Uh, everyone back to work. Geothermal finished. I think that is it. Now, I kind of do want to finish those out, but no. We, we are not drug producers here. We just, we, we're just good, wholesome family, you know, whatever, colony. We're not going to get into drug production. We're not that kind of people. All right, that means this can go, I suppose. Uh, we can deconstruct all of that, and this whole area is going to become part of our bedroom. Oh, uh, we only need to stick in one more double bed, but it should be fairly handy, and... Oh, it's another wedding, and a breakup. Unbreakable and Daryl. Well... Unbreakable told Daryl that it would be best to see other people. Looks like Unbreakable is not so unbreakable. Ah, uh, checking the spreadsheet. This is actually kind of annoying. I had the two of them in the same bed, so now I'm going to have to rejiggle the beds again. Right side, we're redoing the whole bedroom, so this actually works out okay. And uh, we can just rip out... Ooh, we'll leave that wall segment there. I am not exposing any of those things. I do like that all our people are sleeping right beside unstable power cells. It just seems to suit here. Uh, let me think. How am I going to switch this around? Well, I'll, I'll sort that in a minute once the wedding ends. God damn it. Okay, who's winning this time around? One, two, three, four, five, six relationships. One wife. One, two, three, four, five, six relationships. But five of the... Oh my god. Six husbands, no lovers. Dear Christ. Okay. All things a bit weird, all right. And we've got one breakup, but I think I've, I've come up with a way to rearrange all of it so that they can all share a, a bed with a partner. Sort of half the, half the challenge of this now is trying to figure out the, the bed situation. Right, guys, could you hurry up? Maybe clean the place up and we're going to want to expand these bedrooms out. I know exactly what we're going to do. I just need... Yeah, there you go. And there we are. The finished product. Everyone sharing a bed with everyone else and this entire place is still classified as a bedroom. Now, one downside is... Well, all the aesthetics are not very happy with this. Because they're in an impressive bedroom, they're getting a minus five. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? It just means that we get to double up on all the sleep accelerators, so it's only taking 200 watts per person at night. Well, okay, not all the time. Sometimes they don't share at the exact same time. But it's definitely saving us power on that front. Everyone's super duper happy. I think I think now's about a good time to almost start on the endgame missions. Uh, maybe do a bit of a cleanup first. Oh, yeah. There's also a whole bunch of stuff in here that I should probably get rid of. Actually, no, maybe leave it in there. I sort of want to set everyone to a big cleanup and then start the, the end game missions. We can start activating the ship engines. So we'll activate all 12 of the ship reactors. That way, I mean, if any of them get destroyed, so long as just one of them finishes uh, activation, I mean, we're good, right? 
Well, that's the theory. I'm thinking we're just so close to activating the engine, but... Uh, well, actually, I kind of have two options here. One, spend one more year before activating the engine. We want to activate the engine during the summer months, when the temperatures are low, so that we can get human attackers as opposed to just, like, a flood of mechs for t 15 days. That would be horrible. However, if we spend another year, we could get everyone equipped with Phoenix armor, which would be nice, and maybe some nuclear stomachs, and maybe bionic up some of our animals, but then again... You want to waste another year or use another year doing that? I mean, we've got everything else done. We have got neural superchargers. We have got sleep accelerators. We built ourselves up a whole bank of ship reactors. And we built all of this. Like, the amount of, of these biosculptor pods and everything. And we've rotated everyone through them. I think everyone's just about as good as they're going to get. But a little bit of armor and weaponry. Well, a bit of armor and bionics that we could add to them all. First, though, a quick tidy. I want to make sure the place is at least mildly clean. Eh, steel table is created, human leather cap. And I also want to sweep up all of this junk over here and burn it. And we may want to fire off some of our silver. We literally have just too much. We have like 31,000 silver. I was hoping we get a chance to buy something good with it, but we don't. Doomsday wise, we have 13 doomsday rockets. That's ridiculous. Uh, and we scanned gold. Uh, hats wise, what are we down to? We, we've at least spent some of it, so we've got at least 115 tail caps, though there are a few that are not showing up because they were made out of a different material. Yeah, 127. Once, actually, easier way to tell, why don't I just look at here? Yeah, we're up to 136 tail caps. Nice. All right, then, give me one more minute while we finish the tidying. Now, one thing that I have been meaning to do for a long time, but I keep forgetting, is see this over here? This here is silver wall segments from the very start of the game. Uh, I don't know if you re recall how our base looked back then, but it was very petite. So I'm going to leave one piece. I'm leaving one piece of silver here. This is going to be one of the uh, one of the original pieces of our starter base, which is kind of mental when you think about it. The base has come from very, very small to encompass this much. The amount of resources and like deaths that went into building this. Hmm. But yes, I know it's been bugging a few people that the walls here are different colours, but at least I'm replacing some of it. I am leaving the rest of it a little bit patchwork because I kind of feel that it indicates exactly where we come from. But I think I'm going to cut out today's episode here. I think next episode is going to be starting up the engines, though I might do a couple of things first. Namely, wealth dumping. We need to dump, a f we could dump a whole bunch of that silver. It's not going to help us. Also, some of the clothing here and a whole bunch of the hats. I say we toss them and maybe some of the stuff we've got in storage. We have like 1800 human leather we're never going to use, 1800 cloth. I would like to dump some of that stuff because it's kind of pointless to keep around. And we all we do is we dump them into transport pods and launch them into the, the great beyond. Uh, yeah, we can... In fact, I don't even think we can reach a settlement with them at max range. Yeah, that is that is our maximum range. So we can't even launch these at friendlies, unfortunately. But hey, that's okay. That's just fine. Anyway, next episode, I think. Remove the threat limit. Activate the endgame quest, and then see if we can survive the uh, quadruple-sized raids we're going to get hit with. Assuming it doesn't break the game engine a bit like it did last time. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed, and good luck! Thank you.